A lot of times when you're going through something hard or difficult, you tend to get the idea that you're out there all by yourself and nobody else has ever been through this or done this exactly the way you have and it's never hurt as much as it hurts you. And um, uh, I think what both Jesus Calling and I really think Jesus Always will as well have done is they've said to people, there is somebody who knows and understands um, because he's been there. He was there before you got there and he's ready to walk through it with you. And that person is Jesus. Welcome to the Experience Jesus Calling podcast. Chuck Wallington is the co-founder of The Covenant Group and owner of Christian Supply in Spartanburg, South Carolina. Chuck tells the story of what led him to work in the world of Christian products and shares his thought on the new book from Sarah Young, Jesus Always. My name is Chuck Wallington. I um, currently serve as president of Christian Supply Incorporated, which is a large family-owned Christian retail store in Spartanburg, South Carolina. I literally grew up in a Christian bookstore. Uh, My parents opened it about uh, two years before I was born, so a little over 60 years ago. And um, they uh, uh, literally, my crib was in the back of the store. My playpen was in the back of the store. When I turned about 13 or 14, I started working at the store in the afternoons, sweeping the floors and doing things, and just kind of grew up in the industry and uh, have never done anything else, don't want to do anything else. And um, even through college, worked here uh, probably close to full-time, even in college uh, years, and uh, been full-time ever since. I was captured early on by just the thought that I could do a, a serve in a business that also had spiritual impact on people uh, through the products that we sold. Um, I'm not sure I would have gone into retail if it was just quote unquote retail, um, but Christian retail had a ministry aspect that really appealed to that side of me. And um, that, that privilege of being able to put a different Bible in people's hands or to sell them a book that met a need that they were going through or even recommend a gift product or something that was just ideal or a song off a CD that I could introduce them to just really sort of lit my fire from almost the day I walked in here. We have been privileged to have a a major impact in our community over the years. Um, As I mentioned, we've been here 63 years and we're in a relatively small town. Most of the people in the town know about Christian Supply because we've been here so long and and we're pretty involved in the community on a lot of levels. We'll have six or seven hundred young people in our parking lot for a back to school prayer rally. And um, we just do a lot of stuff like that in the community. And we've kind of view ourselves as a crossroads for all denominations in the community to come together in one place. And, um, and that's, that's, that's really a high privilege. When we've done polls uh, in the store, surveys in the store, uh, people in checkout lines and all, we found that about 70% of the purchases people make uh, in our store that are not church related, in other words, they're not buying something for their church, uh, music or offering envelopes or whatever, uh, about 70% of the non-church purchases made in our store are made by someone buying a gift for someone. It can be a birthday, it can be an anniversary, some you know happy occasion, but a lot of times it's because that person is uh, going through some issue. Um, uh, their, their kids are giving them fits. They uh, just got bad news from the doctor. They're going through a divorce, uh, uh, you, you name it. Um, and that's when a lot of people come into this store. I've, I've actually had probably hundreds of customers over the years say, I just like to come in there and walk around sometimes. It just puts me at peace. So that environment and being able to place things in their hands that would help them is, is really just a, a pretty high calling for us. Chuck calls it a privilege to be able to impact his community with products that bring hope and inspiration. Many years ago, when he first heard about Jesus Calling, he knew this book would have lasting impact, not only on his life, but on the lives of those he works with and serves every day in his store. It's actually a pretty interesting story how we got involved with Jesus Calling, and we sold just over 24,000 units of Jesus Calling in the last however many years it's been out. So we've obviously had a lot of people introduced to that book in our store. Uh, The way I got introduced to it was um, we have a a second business where we generate catalogs and promotional items for other Christian retailers. We do them for our own store and then we put other stores' names on them and let them utilize them as well. And we were producing a catalog for our stores and we had an empty spot on a page And it was a a page of gifts for women. And we thought, we just need to put a devotional in there. And I actually called my wife and I said, um, you know, what's the best devotional you've ever used uh, as a woman? 
and she didn't even hesitate. She said, the one I'm using now, it's a, a book I just picked up off the shelf a few weeks ago. It's called Jesus Calling. And I had no idea what book that was, so we put it in there. And all of our stores brought in probably six or ten copies each and put them on the shelf and promoted them during that month. And um, what happened was the book just took off. And all of a sudden, we realized we just had something that we didn't even know what it was originally. This was right at the very beginning, and we just found that every time somebody bought one, within three or four days, they'd be back in the store saying, I need three or four more copies of that book. I've got friends I need to give it to. And it just spread you know, virally, although it wasn't viral as in digital, it was viral as in people coming in and buying copies and handing them to friends or gifting them to friends. And within just a short period of time, it became our number one best-selling book and has stayed at, at or near the top for ever, ever since then. Uh, even every Christmas now, still, it's our number one selling devotional every year. I think the reason the book resonates so strongly with people and, and um, I, I come from a um, Southern Baptist background, so I don't use this word lightly, but I think the book has an anointing on it. And uh, I wouldn't say that about many books we sell. There are some others I would say it about, but not many. Um, it, it really is a peculiar book in that every person that I ever have given it to or sold it to that's gotten back to me, we hear this over and over in our store, is every day when I open that book, it seems like that day's writing was written just for me. Um, that's, that's not just great writing by Sarah Young. I mean, that's... Um, the Lord has taken that book and he's used it in a special way. I think he gifted her uniquely to write the book and um, to connect to the heart of her readers in a way that just is very deep and um, very personal. And it feels as though she wrote the book just for you when you read every day's devotional. I hear that comment. I've probably heard it a thousand times about that book. When I first heard that Sarah was doing another 365-day devotional, everybody's been waiting for one. When I first heard she was doing a, a new one that was going to be a full-year devotional, uh, I was excited and I was a bit anxious. Um, as I mentioned earlier, the, the Jesus Calling book is, is a very unique book. I would put it in a class of probably the top four or five books uh, in our store uh, over the you know 45 years I've worked here. And um, uh, it holds a special place. So whatever you hear, there's another one like it coming. You always you know, have some of this fear and trepidation of, is it going to be the same? Is it going to be as good? And it just seems to me like Sarah has captured that same voice, uh, that same um, ability to write into people's lives, uh, just what they need to hear. Uh, once again, so I'm I'm very excited about the um, release of Jesus always, and and I think it's going to impact people that have experienced Jesus calling, and some people have read through it eight or ten times now, and I think they're going to have a whole fresh set of devotionals, uh, all based around the theme of joy that uh, will speak to them in a fresh way. Just a couple weeks ago, we had a major event here in our in our company that we do every year. We have. Uh, seven or eight hundred ministers of music come in for a four-day worship conference and I just flipped back to read what it said on the opening day of that conference just to see you know what word there was from Jesus always for that day and I was struck once again because I read it that day it was on stress and how um, Jesus is there uh, to walk us through our points of stress and just when we think there's nowhere else to turn that we can turn to him and it was just a good reminder of um, uh, the fact that uh, he's in charge, he's in control, he has authority. And uh, when you're going through something that's stressful as that first day of our conference, the opening day of our conference was, that's just a good word. I think the topic of both books, uh, peace in the case of Jesus calling and joy in, in the presence of Jesus in the case of Jesus always, um, if there's two things that, that are sorely lacking in our culture today, it's peace and joy. Uh, so I think those two topics will resonate in a big way. Uh, you know, a lot of the people that come in our store just need um, encouragement uh, is probably the word I would use overall. Uh, they're going through something, and, you know, when you're going through things, you feel like you're the only one this has ever happened to, and nobody else understands. And I think the thing that Jesus Calling has done so well, and it seems to me Jesus always is headed in the same direction, is to say, uh, well, there is somebody who knows and understands, and his name is Jesus. And he not only understands, he's been there before you ever got there, and he'll walk through it with you. Next time on the Experience Jesus Calling podcast, 
we bring you stories of courageous women who are a part of The Next Door, a nonprofit organization that helps women who have been incarcerated or who are dealing with substance abuse issues find hope and strength for a new season of life. My name is Linda Leathers and I serve as the CEO of The Next Door. Last night, I was with a group uh, and this was their first two days at The Next Door. And I heard them and they were, um, they were devastated. They were scared. They did not feel that their, um, that their life had any meaning. And I got a chance to share with that group that they're amazing and that Jesus loves them, that we're gonna do our best to love them and that they don't have to be defined by their past, that God's got a plan and purpose for life that is good. It's all about helping a woman understand that, boy, there's no easy way around this. It's gonna take hard work, but just hold on. So our role is to say, yeah, you're amazing. Come on in, let us love you. Um, and let us sort of help you along. And, and that God is your friend. He loves you and that He has a plan and purpose for your life that is good. No judgment, grace, mercy, hope. Our featured passage for today's show comes from the August 9th entry of the Jesus Calling audiobook. Wear my robe of righteousness with ease. I custom made it for you to cover you from head to toe. The price I paid for this covering was astronomical. My own blood. You could never purchase such a royal garment, no matter how hard you worked. Sometimes you forget that my righteousness is a gift, and you feel ill at ease in your regal robe. I weep when I see you squirming under the velvety fabric as if it were made of scratchy sackcloth. I want you to trust me enough to realize your privileged position in my kingdom. Relax in the luxuriant folds of your magnificent robe. Keep your eyes on me as you practice walking in this garment of righteousness. When your behavior is unfitting for one in my kingdom, do not try to throw off your royal robe. Instead, throw off the unrighteous behavior. Then you will be able to feel at ease in this glorious garment, enjoying the gift I fashioned for you before the foundation of the world. Hear more great stories about the impact Jesus Calling is having all over the world. Be sure to subscribe to the Jesus Calling podcast on iTunes. We value your reviews and comments so we can reach even more people with the message of Jesus Calling. And if you have your own story to share, we'd love to hear from you. Visit JesusCalling.com to share your story today.